All right, good to go. See you, Lightning. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, like to start out with just a few classic questions that can relate to, and then we hit you with the hard stuff. So. Uh, we all had that first video game experience that hooked us in one way or another. Um, what was that first video game moment for yourself? Uh, my first memory was my dad was a gamer. He played like PlayStation 1, Super Nintendo games, like, you know, the super old Final Fantasies and shit. So mm -hmm. that and Crash Bandicoot with my mom were like, like literally since I could remember, I, I saw people loving video games. Awesome. Yeah, those old games. <laughs> What was your first first game in an online format, and how did that change and impact you, the online aspect of it? I think it was RuneScape back in like 2005, mm -hmm. and um, I learned I learned the world is cruel, bro. <laughs> There's nobody that's gonna trim your armor for free, bro. They're not taking you to the wilderness to give you their money, bro. They're gonna take it all from you, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just. For me, it was the Rainbow Six Three, the first one, and just yeah, it is brutal. Those lobby, yeah. <clears throat> what has the world ain't cuddly? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. No. <laughs> it all ain't nice teddy bears out there. Uh, what has been your favorite video game Easter egg over the years? Oh man, I think it had to be. Um, it's kind of a long one, but all of the like COD Zombies ones. Okay. I did like all of them up to like Ascension or something. Like I had such fun memories doing all the Easter eggs and in all of the the Zombies games. That was probably like Black Ops One the most. Yeah. No, I, I feel I for me it was just a battlefield, but the same way they kept putting them in there. So it was like the, all the stuff that they hid in there. It's like it's addictive. <laughs> um, okay. okay. So, so you're stranded on an island with the two items found within run arms reach right now. What are they? Fuck, I've got a bong and some coffee here. I'm set. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're, you're going to call me tomorrow. That's awesome. <clears throat> have a good ass time, bro. Yes, you will. What does the current you tell your 16-year-old you? Um, stop being such a dick, bro. <laughs> Just lighten up, handsome. Come on. And then I'd smack the back of my head gently. <laughs> that's freaking that's 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 freaking good one good one a lot of, you learn a lot with age <clears throat> yeah bro just fucking don't take life so seriously man like everything's gonna come when it needs to like you're not gonna starve like i'm you know like as, if if you've got like you know a roof over your head if you've got like those bare things done like everything else it's, something's gonna be okay like uh, you know nothing you don't have to worry about everything forever a hundred percent right yep <clears throat> all right uh da, 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 da. What was your what has been your favorite gun to shoot and what's your dream gun to own and shoot? This one guy saw you shooting so I was just like, oh, I'm going to ask this one. <laughs> That's a good one. Um I think my favorite one, it's not really the I haven't shot like a gun that was my favorite, but I loved clay shooting with shotguns. Okay. So I have a Benelli uh semi-automatic that I love and Ooh, uh, nice. If I could shoot any gun, I think I'd like to shoot a uh I kind of want to shoot like my my Tarkov guns, like I'd like to shoot like yeah. an SA-58. Could you imagine in the future, like those were opportunities, like you build a gun and you go into a virtual and you literally get to hold them and shoot them. Like, whatever you make. <laughs> that's freaking... The future of creativity with VR and shit looks so good to oh. me. Like, that's the reason VR is going to be rad, is all that like, <laughs> customization shit. What's the weirdest item we would find in your refrigerator right now? You know, I have like I have like two empty Tupperwares that I just haven't done the dishes on, and for some reason I put back empty. Like there's like a shell of mac and cheese in here. What the fuck is there? It, it's like the people that put the fake things uh, at, lo at office when people go and t steal your lunches, and they like do this a magic thing. They put like tuna fish, but they make it with cat food or something because they know people been stealing it. It's just like you have an empty one with like ma mac and cheese that's been there for like ten years. You're like, I'll just bring this. I'll leave it in there. Somebody will take. It. Uh, it's like, but you're doing it to yourself. But you're doing it to yourself. Stop hitting yourself, bro. Stop hitting yourself. Bro. Yeah, that's what you're doing. Just stop hitting yourself. All right. Uh, so, how did you get into Escape from Tarkov? I was playing Rust, and I was trying really hard to get my friends into it, and they were like, kind of about it, but not really. 
And they were like, let's try something else, bro. And I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to. And then eventually I, they downloaded it. And they've both stopped playing since, basically. But I kept going forever. I, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it's addictive, but it definitely is that love-hate. <laughs> what is what is the favorite thing? What's your favorite thing about Escape from Tarkov? Um, uh, this sounds really weird, but it's the clunkiness. Like, Tarkov is... Um, like in order to like reload the most efficiently like you have to do it a very weird way with your inventory with like right clicking and healing and shit mm -hmm. in order to move the most efficient you've got to do it a very specific way you know with like the slides and shit on accident so things so, aren't like, just I set really out like for the... you you have to go out and like explore the best thing it's not polished in that aspect yeah you've really got to be like um like everything has to have purpose because if you like accidentally like do some stupid shit and you're like oh fuck you just put yourself so far out of position so fast uh, you can't just you know like although like the ad meta is real you can't just always hit backwards you know if you slide if you crouch slow if you fuck up your walking speed if you ads yep. right at the wrong time all that can it, just screw you it's not like in those old days those first games where you just like oh here the guy's gonna lean watch out he's just gonna do the lean or the or you know a kneel you know a drop shot or something it's like it's so much more more than that <laughs> uh yeah. If you could change one thing in Escape from Tarkov, what would it be? It, it'd have to be the server situation. I mean, that's a cop-out answer, it feels, but, like, it's such a beautiful game that can never go competitive because the tick rate of the servers is half of that of what they play competitive, like CSGO and stuff on. And it doesn't even, like, the ping is, is not, you know... It wants to push one way. of the hardest areas, but with the that weakest back, as you're saying. It just it's gonna cap everything else. You can't have a competitive game. You can't grow the game to where they want to grow it to. So they're not gonna be able to keep the active players online. Like it just everything else breaks down from that. I feel. Cause, I mean, yeah, because it's pretty much based around that. You know, making sure you get the uh, the sinking and the you know I can't think of the metrics, the right words for you know when you you're firing to make sure it's hitting and that everybody's lined up. Because if you can't get that right in a first person shooter, it's like. It's like trying to paint with two colors. Like, you know, you're trying to paint <laughs> sunsets with just gray and black. Like, you just can't do it with that other, that, that part. Um, no right. cool feature is going to work around that. Yeah, exa exactly. Uh, in your opinion, what shooter changed everything for first-person shooters? Uh, GoldenEye, Rainbow Six, Halo, Battlefield. Like, what was that one that, like, that one came out and it was just, like, every kind of changed the world. I would say the world, but changed that video game. I think the one that people sleep on for changing um, video gaming in general is, uh, this sounds really weird, but Modern Warfare 2. Not Modern Warfare 1, and but it Modern Warfare 2 because that was like one of the largest leaps in competitive gaming was yep. during that time. And Modern Warfare 2 was super, I mean, it was a very popular game. People loved the multiplayer for it and the search and destroy and the maps. And but around that time in Black Ops is when esports really started bumping for FPSs and started pushing and um you know cs and obviously is like the the og of it you know like that's like yes. the, you know those are the ones that actually established everything but cod brought in such a larger audience to it with the accessibility as well that they had with console and shit that cs never did that i think that was pretty revolutionary like that forever is going to make esports <clears throat> difficult like it, there's the competition is just so much higher now it, yeah it, i as someone like cause so i I not playing, but was in the the upper side of it when SOCOM 2 was really popular in the PlayStation. So watching SOCOM and then game battles come up and how popular it, it just that whole competitive scene and it's just it's a world difference from where it was to now. It's it leaps and bounds. It's crazy. Uh, so what was that first job you ever had, and how long did you last there? The first real job I had was selling cars. I lasted there for like a year and a half. Oh, hey. <laughs> it it the sit was it the salesman aspect or just better job? Um, I was still I was actually gonna leave that dealership at first to go to another dealership. Um, so I was like enjoying sales. I was like I'm competitive and um I can talk to people. Like I got yeah. I very I couldn't at first, but I very quickly got rid of my inhibition to talk to people. So I was fine getting rejected all day or whatever so i was just i was super aggressive and i it didn't bother me it didn't get me down like some of the other guys did so i was just kind of fit for it but after i got out of sales for like a month that's all it took me to realize like nah sales is just 
it's just too toxic and shitty. There's just so many. Yeah. At least you had that mentality that when you get knocked down to just get back up. A lot of people get stuck on that, you know, whether it's sales or anything, you know, it's just you have to get back up and keep going. You can't learn these things if that doesn't happen, you know. Yeah. And as a kid that like grew up with like that perfectionist by where like if I can't do it amazing and don't do it at all, like that fixed to me. You know, uh, like, getting yeah. my ass knocked around all day for months was what I needed to get there. Hey, it's steps. <laughs> you gotta take yeah. steps. Uh so please finish this sentence. Pineapple pineapples on pizza is fucking weird, dude. You like <laughs> come on man. I don't know. Like you're not putting any other fruit on there. No one's putting fucking green beans on there. No one's chopping up no pomegranate seeds on their fucking pizza. Like, I get that society told you this is okay, but society's wrong sometimes. You're stupid. <laughs> Shelby, no, I know, I know. That's why I love asking these questions. <laughs> <laughs> if it's just a wider says <clears throat> Okay, so if you could choose what... Uh, 14, home stretch. If you could choose uh, one superhero power, what would it be and why? <laughs> um, I think time control. Because, like... Pretty much everything can stem from that shit, man. I don't I, need to fly if I could just stop time and walk. I've heard flying and, and strength and invisibility and seeing through, but time. That's a great, that's a great, great answer. <clears throat> what would you do if you won the lottery? What would the first 24 hours be like? I don't know, bro. I might go back to doing coke for a day. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I probably first twenty four hours. I'd probably go live. I mean, like the first twenty four hours would probably be the exact same. I mean, I'd be excited. I'd be calling everyone I knew, but I don't think anyone would change. I I can't go out and ex fucking do anything during COVID. <laughs> Try to stay grounded. Nice. That's true. Oh, that's true. With the pleasant. I didn't even think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? What was the best movie you've seen lately, and your all time favorite? All-time favorite's The Big Lebowski. Oh, nice. Quality. I can't think of a fucking... I don't remember the most recent movie I've seen. It's been a long time, bro. Yeah, movies, it's... I mean, I hate to say it sucks right now with movies. It's just, you know, that, that kind of shut down all those. <clears throat> bro, I suck at watching movies. Anyway. I suck at most things, but especially that. So if you could trade places with any person for a month, famous or not, living or dead, with whom would it be? Uh, living or dead famous person or I not think I'd go yeah. with, uh... it doesn't have to be famous you know it could be anybody it could be your greatest great uncle you know what I mean it just I think I'd want to see um... you know what I want I want to be Jesus I want to be Jesus I want to figure <laughs> out if, if, if I want to see what if the Bible was telling the truth that's, or what, but I want to that's... What that oh my could you imagine the month after that you're that knowledge just in that one month like and, and and going back you know not even going forward all that going back you would gain so much knowledge in that 30 days as him than than anywhere else in the future that's that's a phenomenal answer for that question so great i figure, I figure out a lot of celebrities that way <laughs> such a good answer uh, if you could live in one if you can live in one place forever for free but you had to leave tomorrow would you and where yeah i can live for free like no yep I mean, yep I'd free probably go to like fucking norway high cost of living but everyone's super happy and educated and they have great internet nice norway's beautiful yeah it's it's the it's, uh, leave tomorrow a lot of people oh you know what i mean like i need a week you know what i mean so but no you're just like yeah let's go norway <laughs> That's awesome. I got my computer right here, dog. It's, it's uh, let's go. Yeah, he's computer. like, he didn't say I couldn't grab anything. <laughs> uh, uh, what was the last or most recent book you've read and then your favorite all time? Um, I'm reading a current book about human hacking right now. Um, like hacking like, DNA? No, like um, how hackers like ac get information that they need from people without actually like, you know, no software hacking, just like... Uh, I, right I see. The right Asking like, the right things, but not directly, indirectly getting the information. Yeah, so it was like a security expert basically talking about like how to protect yourself from shit and like why people implement the shit they do, and it was interesting. Oh. So, um, my favorite book of all time might be Battlefield Earth by L. Ron Hubbard. I think. Yeah, nice book. Quality, quality, nice. 
All right, so you have to return one state, like United States. You have to return one of the states to its previous owner. Which one, Which state has to go? Bro, I feel bad what we did to Mexico, man. Like, they can choose, I think. We give them California or Texas, whichever one they want back. Uh, that's, a good, that's a good answer. Like, you can have one back. A lot of people say Rhode Island. I don't know, but that that's great. You think about who we took it from. That's good. That's good. You're just like, here, you guys, you guys can have yours back. <laughs> Yeah, we fucked up with this one. My bad, bro. But here you go. You you pick. You pick. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, okay. So last question. Uh, what would you rather fight? One horse-sized duck, or a hundred duck-sized horses? I thought about this question a lot, and I'm gonna go with the one horse-sized duck. Not because I necessarily think I could kill it, but I simply just don't have the physical stamina to keep fighting a hundred. <laughs> I just can't. I just, I just, the last one, I'd just be punching slow as shit. I couldn't grab it. <laughs> and this is like, oh, I, like a lot of people picked 100. And I'm like, dude, those things still kick. And like, you have 100 of them, like, all right there. <laughs> That's great. From, bro. Like, I don't even know where to start. I, 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 I would too. <laughs> Sweet. That was awesome. Thank you so much. We have 20 questions. questions. Thank you. I appreciate it, Yikes. Thank you. Thank you.